Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my pencil portrait of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This was actually done in a combination of charcoal pencil and graphite pencil. Alright, first I'm going to show you uh, what I've got going on here and uh, explain what I'm doing and then we're going to go over the materials, the reference, the composition and some of the other general stuff. So as you can see I started uh, with a sketch already in place. I did this uh, with a graphite pencil and I used a combination of transfer and freehand and notice that I also did some light shading here on the background, on some parts of the background around the shoulders. And that, I, I did that with a brush by the way. And that's because I need some of the lighter parts of his jersey to stand out against the background and I also started working on his hair and that's what I'm doing now with this Kohinoor uh, charcoal pencil and I'm gonna try to imitate the texture of his curly hair, short curly hair by uh, dragging my pencil like this and making short circular marks and in those places where I need to make it lighter I'm just gonna uh, make fewer marks or use less pressure in that area and where it needs to be darker like for example in this area which is further away from the light source apparently I'm just gonna use more and use more pressure anyway in terms of the materials I'm gonna be using Kohinoor charcoal pencils and Faber-Castell matte graphite pencils so it's a combination of charcoal and graphite um, for blending I'm going to use brushes, tortillions, the usual stuff and for erasing I'm going to use a kneaded eraser and, uh, and the Kohinoor pencil eraser. Now the reference will be uh, the reference will be in the description if you want to check it out. I obviously made some adjustments to it because of the composition and how I wanted to fit it into the um, into the size of my paper and by the way I'm working on a Fibriano drawing paper 9 times 12 inches in size and I'm going to draw this like a vignette so I'm going to fade the edges here which is what I normally do with a lot of my portraits so now I'm just going to keep working on this here and another thing I forgot to mention, here on my sketch you can see I uh, drew some tiny circles here. Those are going to be some of the lightest portions of my drawing, so I'm really going to try to work around them and keep them clean. I'm going to try to reserve that white space so that those highlights, those reflections on the glasses would really stand out, but we'll see how it goes. I actually have two different grades of these charcoal pencils. Um, one of them is a little bit darker than the other, so I'm going to use a combination of the two because some parts of that hair will be a bit lighter because they're kind of facing up towards the light source and others will be really dark, so I can use the softer and darker one for those. <clears throat> and for those lighter bits here, like for example, around the top of the head and the front part of the head, I, I can use the uh, lighter one and maybe also use less pressure, which will give me a uh, texture that I'm looking for, but, the, but at the same time make it a bit lighter in certain places. In some places it's going to appear almost completely black with hardly any light details at all. And of course I'm going to work on top of that with a brush, blending it a little bit. I talked about the uh, properties of different blending tools in many of my different videos, but um, one of the good things about brushes is that they will not destroy the texture you created. They will blend 
and soften a little bit but most of those lines most of those suggestions of details will still remain in place which is which is a good thing when you're working on something like here where you want that illusion of detail I started working on the ear and first I'm going to draw some of the darker details and then I'm going to shade the rest that's generally uh, my approach to a lot of the details on the face I like to put in those darker areas first that makes it easier for me to gauge the overall amount of value I need to put in other parts of the face but also it helps me navigate through the rest of the drawing in terms of the proportions and things like that now I'm going to shade the forehead area above those glasses and here as you can see I switched to a graphite pencil the graphite pencils I'm using here are Faber-Castell matte graphite pencils I found that um, they probably work a little bit better with these charcoal pencils because they're matte, they're darker and they're also less um, greasy I suppose so they tend to work a bit better because they're not that dissimilar to these Kohinoor black pencils that, I, that I'm using in combination with them I'm just doing a little bit more work around the edges to make the hair look more natural and now I'm gonna put in a little bit more work on the ear and around the ear and I'm gonna start working on these glasses and of course the eye socket area now whenever you're drawing portraits of people wearing glasses and obviously these are special kinds of uh, protective uh, glasses, protective eyewear um, but when, whenever you're drawing people with glasses there are some advantages and disadvantages to it um, one of the advantages I suppose is that it makes it a little bit easier to capture the overall shape of that area around the eyes but at the same time it makes it a little bit more difficult to understand those smaller shapes around the eye socket and inside the eye socket but here I think I can see the details pretty clearly the only thing that's going to make things a little bit more complicated for me are those tiny reflections uh, on the glasses themselves so as I've already mentioned in the intro I'm going to uh, try to reserve the white space and work around them shade around them so that they would remain white or almost completely white and so that they would stand out against the rest of the face and the rest of the portrait um, because of the great, great deal of contrast because they're supposed to be lighter than everything else but we'll see um, now I'm working on the eye on one of the eyes and first I drew the general shape the, the iris the pupil a bit of the eyebrows even though we can't really see uh, all of the eyebrow because uh, it's partly um, hidden by those reflections above it uh, which I'm gonna get to in a minute and now I'm shading uh, the rest of that part of the face using um, a 4P graphite pencil and then blending with a Tutilian I picked a Tutilian as my choice of blending tools here because a Tutilian can be rolled into a fine tip and it can blend smaller, finer areas, finer details. And another good thing about a Tutilian is that when it picks up a little bit of that material you can also use it as a drawing tool, not just as a blending tool, so you can actually pull some smaller, lighter shapes with it. Uh, where those shapes don't need to be really well defined so you can see as I'm making progress on those glasses and working my way around those lighter areas you can see that those lighter areas are really starting to stand out and there's a lot of contrast around them 
And at the same time, I'm hoping that I've managed to capture the likeness of the person or the shape and the expression of his eyes. Now, I could simplify the shape and the appearance of the glasses even more, but I suppose I don't want to leave some of these areas completely white. I want to give them a little bit more range of value, a little bit more texture. Moving on to this beard and the sideburns here and just uh, working my way down first by drawing some of these lighter curly hairs around the edges and then I'm going to fill that in uh, with a little more texture and a little more value because the beard is going to be getting darker uh, here at the bottom because that part of the face or that part of the head is facing down so it's facing away from the light source And when you're drawing uh, based on these references t taken from basketball games there are usually multiple light sources and they're usually a little bit confusing uh, there's usually lots of reflections and things like that but in most cases the light will be the, the light will be coming from above so all of the surfaces facing down or facing away from that direction will tend to be darker so you can see that I'm making this part of the of the beard a lot darker and of course again blending that uh, with a brush and then going back in and refining some details with a pencil. Here I'm starting to work on the neck and the shoulder area. I'm going to draw some of the details on the jersey and the edges of that jersey and then I'm going to start shading the the area on the neck and around the neck and uh, <clears throat> just like there are some reflections on the glasses there are also some uh, reflective lighter parts of the face as well as the as well as the neck here so this area here that goes from the clavicle bone all the way to the ear is supposed to be a lot lighter because that part of the body is reflecting a bit of light so I'm going to work around it reserving the white space for now but I'm also going to shade over it lightly here and there uh, so that I would integrate it better into the rest of the into the rest of the portrait and then if needed I'm going to go back and do a little bit of erasing with a pencil eraser to reinforce some of those uh, lighter bits or maybe to uh, maybe, maybe to modify their shape a little bit. Here I'm adding some final touches to this beard to, so that I can make it look a little bit more curly and a, a little bit more realistic because you can't always produce the text you want just by um, going over it using that circular motion which I used initially sometimes you need to be a little bit more specific and you, you need to pay attention to the specific shapes that you see in the reference so that you would capture the exact uh, type or the exact texture of the hair which is what I did here so I think that both the hair and the beard now look a lot more realistic and a lot more like uh, what we actually see in the reference. I've actually done a series of portraits of basketball players and basketball related people. I didn't record all of them. It was a series of commissioned drawings. I didn't record all of them, but this is um, one of those that I decided to record. No particular reason, I suppose. I just uh, felt like uh, doing a video on this one. And I think it, it turned out uh, nice, especially in terms of composition. I, I managed to fit it in nicely into the, into the size of this paper. Just working on some details on the neck and then the ear, doing a little bit of erasing. And by the way, for erasing, 
I'm using the Kohinoor pencil eraser so I can draw some lighter details on those clavicle bones on the neck and things like that. And finally I can add some some of those uh, hairs on the neck or that transition between the neck and the jaw. And then I can go down here and do a little bit more shading, a little bit more work on the jersey. I'm going to fade the edges because this is supposed to be a vignette, like most of my portraits. I just prefer vignettes, not just because I don't have to worry about the background, but also because uh, they're a lot more balanced and they allow you to mm, be more flexible with the composition and focus on whatever it is that you think is more important in a portrait. So I'm just uh, finishing the other eye and the other side of the glasses here. And I'm going to uh, start working on the nose and drawing the nostrils. First starting with those darker areas. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shading around the nose and on the nose itself. Um, there are also some highlights on the nose because our nose is a round area. so some parts of the, or at least the tip of the nose is a round area, so some parts of it will be reflecting some of that light coming from above. And uh, that's another thing that I need to try to capture. So you can see my general approach here was to do the darker and more textured areas using the Kohino charcoal pencil and to do the lighter areas where lighter shading and finer textures are needed to do, do those with a graphite pencil. And now I'm shading the cheek and the cheekbone area, starting very lightly and doing a little bit of cross hatching so that I can build up the value in those darker areas more gradually. And in that initial stage, while, while I'm laying down the, the values, I'm not too worried about uh, the texture. I'm not, I'm not too worried about those lines because I can always soften those lines using my blending tools, either a brush or a q-tip. And I can do some additional refining using a, a pencil eraser if I need to make something lighter or take away a bit of value. Now I'm moving on to the nose and now I'm shading around those smaller lighter details and hoping that they would stand out. As for the mouth, um, the, the mouth kind of has a slightly uh, weird shape, weird expression. I think he may be um, maybe wearing some kind of a mouth guard or something. Don't really know. Or maybe it's just his lips. Anyway, I uh, decided to draw the mustache area first so that it would be a little bit easier for me to shade the upper lip. I thought that it would kind of frame the upper lip and make it easier for me to draw the rest of it and also to determine how much value I need in it. Just putting down some finishing touches on the nose and doing a little bit of erasing on it to bring back those lighter areas and then all I need to do uh, when it comes to the face is finish the lower lip and this uh, part of the chin and the lower the part of the face around the mouth. There I'm going to do some additional shading and a little bit of blending and of course add a few random hairs here and there because his beard is kind of messy, not particularly carefully groomed. I don't do as many portraits as I do landscapes, so I wanted to throw in a portrait just to break the monotony of the channel. And after this, I may do some wildlife. We'll see. Anyway, just uh, putting down some finishing touches on the face and the beard. And now all I need to do is finish the jersey. Just going to work around these light areas and do some, and also around those letters at the bottom, the 
Lakers um, name on the jersey. And I'm going to shade the the jersey using a graphite pencil again. So I only use two grades of a graphite pencil because I uh, for the for the darker values I use the Kohinoor pencils. For the lighter values I use uh, I use those graphite pencils. But like I said, the, those are matte graphite pencils. And I'm almost done here. I skipped ahead a little bit, and, and as you can see, I put my signature in the lower right part of the drawing. So now the drawing is finished. I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to check out my other videos. Um, if you want to see more content and longer videos, you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye for now.